So today I wanted to share some information about upcoming historical games I'm excited about. So here are some timestamps for the major categories and the titles we'll be discussing. But before we dive in, I did want to do a little housekeeping. This video is actually going up to give me some cover as I work on more documentaries. We've got a ton of content coming down the pipeline on things like Julius Caesar, the Islamic Golden Age, and Wargaming to list just a few. What's extra exciting is that I will also be finishing up the Siege of Jerusalem series in the next month or so. As a bonus for your patience, we're also going to be releasing a special episode to ride along it on the heroes of the siege. So that's all exciting and upcoming. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this video. We're going to start with the city building simulators category. Games in this series focus on resource management and construction rather than combat. And they're similar to previous games like Banished, which I've played rather extensively. I'm going to cover this section in the chronological order of the settings. First off the bat will be Ancient Cities. This Kickstarter game takes place in the Neolithic era as you guide generations of humans through primitive development to transform your tribe's humble camp into a thriving beacon of civilization. Because of its setting, the game will definitely stand out from most previous simulators you've seen. The survival aspect especially will be more pronounced, and you will definitely be more in tune with your environment. The low tech may be off-putting to some, but I think it's definitely a refreshing way to experience a time period that so rarely gets covered in media and games. The team right now is relatively small and focused on the first release, with a release date not yet announced. If they do find success though, they have plans to extend time periods forward into the Bronze Age and early years of great civilizations of the Mediterranean and China. I for one wish them the best of luck and am very eager with the development and the success they've had so far. Next up is going to be Builders of Egypt. This game takes place along the Nile Valley with a story stretching from the Old Kingdom to the time of Cleopatra. I have to say this game really really caught my attention thanks to the setting, wonderful attention to detail, and the amazing sense of scale it gives you. One of the cool features is that your massive cities actually fall into a larger region map from which you can engage in trade, politics, and warfare. Here's a relevant quote from the Steam page. The governor will face very difficult choices in a constantly changing environment. Costly expeditions, requests from pharaoh and other cities, military threats, and a mixture of different cultures will be commonplace. A series of wrong choices can cost you the loss of trading partners and low interest in the city from would-be settlers. Moreover, the total lack of obedience to rulers may end up with civil war. It's definitely a super ambitious project and I look forward to hearing more soon. For now though, no release date has been posted by the rather small development team. The next title is Foundation. This medieval city builder has a breathtaking cartoon art style. Already in early access, it has great reviews, and you'll have a ton to do already as you enjoy the team's frequent updates coming out of their very active development cycle or the mod community. The game's main selling point is the organic nature of development, which really lets you grow like actual cities into the landscape. They've got tons of rich details built into the game with a huge number of moving parts that make the world deeply immersive. Adding to this, they've actually included a unique monument creation tool that allows you to design your own focal points for your cities. On top of this, you can chill out to some wonderful soundtracks put together by the composers behind the Paradox series. This game is already one of my most anticipated so far, even in its alpha state, and I can't wait for them to announce its final release. The last game in our little series here is The Settlers. This new addition in the 25 year old series is set in a medieval fantasy world. With Ubisoft behind it, there has been a high degree of polish. The art style is charming and vivid, while the graphics and animations look fantastic. The UI has been slimmed down and things are streamlined, which indicates that they are going for a game that's a bit more approachable than the previous deep simulators we've just covered. Another differentiator to the game is the combat system that makes it function a bit more like an RTS title than most building simulators. Set to release this fall, I'm deeply excited. Now we turn to games with a more heavy focus on battles in the real-time strategy genre. Age of Empires 4 is the first one that springs to mind. This beloved PC title from Microsoft and Relic Studios hasn't really had too much information dropped about it and we know very little thus far. Age of Empires 3, which came out previously, Form rather poorly as it tried to introduce large changes that the community had a pretty big blowback to, so I'd expect this next iteration to play it safe. The trailer that we have seen for Age of Empires 4 does show a wide selection of playable factions from across the ages, 
which is to be contrasted with the narrow set from Age of Empires 3, which stuck to the European colonization of the Americas. What we can get from this is that Age of Empire 4 looks to be returning to the earlier titles and the way things were done back then. So if they do play it safe and stick to previous titles, expect updated graphics and UI, but expect the rest of the core changes to be rather small. Thus far, no release date has been posted yet, and they weren't even announced at E3 2019, though there is likely to be some news popping up soon. Next up is Stronghold Warlords. This RTS comes out of Firefly Studios' numerous castle simulator series. Set in the Far East from the 3rd century China to the rise of the Shogunate and the Mongol invasions of the 13th century, you manage your economy, build armies, and customize your defenses. It's closer to the original Stronghold game, but with new polish and unique flair. One of the biggest changes is the introduction of Warlords, which come with unique perks, characteristics, and upgradable abilities. Each new campaign mission, skirmish, or multiplayer battle will mean a fresh set of Warlords. I've never really played this series thus far, but it does seem to have a very loyal and avid fanbase who are really taking on to this new title. Expect a release in early 2020. Our next title here is Romans Age of Caesar. It's another upcoming project from Firefly Studio. Although it does seem like this one is a bit smaller in scope and scale, I still wanted to include it nonetheless. It's a cooperative city builder set in the Roman era, with simple isometric art styles that look like early Age of Empires games. It's free to play, an MMO style with up to thousands of players in each world. I'm eager to learn more and do hope that it manages to steer clear of the generic games plaguing the mobile market. Set to release in 2020, you can check out Firefly Studios where they host a lot of community Q&A questions. Next up is going to be Soldiers Arena. This is a squad-based RTS set in World War II. It's from the creators of the Men at War series, so you know it's going to be good. They're known for focusing on immersion, realism, and fast-paced action. Here's a summary of the features that they are touting on the Steam page. Highlights include direct control of units in third and first person, a large 200 unit roster, diverse gameplay such as sabotage, hijacking, and saving the wounded, environmental destruction and modular damage on vehicles, and more. It's definitely looking like a must-buy for anyone who is into realistic RTS titles. But for now, the wait continues and no release date has been announced. Finally, the last in this RTS series is going to be Iron Harvest. It takes place in a World War I type setting, but with alternative history, where steampunk tech rules the world and you have tons of mechs roaming around the battlefield. It's actually a Kickstarter funded project by King Art Games. The gameplay feels very similar to Company of Heroes 1, but with an obvious twist on units and abilities. The Kickstarter was fully funded, so expect a ton of amazing content. This includes robust multiplayer options, campaigns, and a free DLC campaign piled on top. Looking at their game design goals and how the alpha is going, things are looking really great so far. Gameplay is simple and intuitive, visual and sound feedback is responsive, tactical decisions matter, and victory is not just a matter of clicks per minute. All in all, I have to say this is looking like my favorite in the RTS category so far. Look forward to release in December of 2019. Now we move on to action RPGs. For this series, we'll now be even closer to the combat on an individual scale. First title up is going to be Valhall. This game is a fresh take on the Battle Royale series, but set in a Viking setting. This project is crowdfunded on Indiegogo, and the development team clearly has a deep respect for its backers. They've devoted huge amounts of time to getting it right in terms of realism and gameplay. The battlefield you play on is essentially Valhalla, where 50 warriors fight out eternally. The map is split up into four parts, each with their own season and unique environmental effects. The map shrinks as the edges crumble away, forcing players into a huge arena at the center. I have to say I'm deeply impressed with what has been released so far and the way the dev team interacts with their community. For now, they have not set a release date as they intend to keep their promise of releasing a polished final project. If this is something that interests you, definitely head on over to their Indiegogo page to lend your support. While we're on the topic of Vikings, I did want to talk briefly about this next title, which is going to be Assassin's Creed. So the codename apparently for the new Assassin's Creed game is going to be Kingdom. We know very little about it right now, although rumors, hints, and leaks seem to indicate that it's going to be taking place in a Viking setting. That's all we could say for now, this is thus far unconfirmed, so stay tuned for more details. 
But in terms of other projects coming out of Ubisoft, you can expect a historical title called Skull and Bones to come out sooner, and we do know more details about this. So this one revolves around pirate combat on the high seas. The tactical game is set in an open world environment and is basically an evolution of the Assassin's Creed Black Flag combat. In this title, however, more depth has been added to the mechanics, and some arcade features have been implemented for tracking health and damage. While Skull and Bones does have a single player campaign, expect the bulk of the focus to be on its multiplayer combat, where you can gather up to 5 players to duke it out with enemies. One of the core modes featured is a loot hunt, where two groups challenge one another to find and accumulate treasure. Likely to come out in early 2020, this will be an awesome setting for fans of broadsides and boarding. Another upcoming title to look out for is going to be Ghosts of Tsushima. Set in 13th century Japan, you play the role of a samurai, taking on the invading Mongols. The game features a mix of action-adventure, stealth, and exploration mechanics with heavy parallels to the Assassin's Creed series. As a AAA, PS4 exclusive, it has a huge budget and talented team behind it. The results speak for themselves. The visuals are breathtaking and feature jaw-dropping levels of detail. The audio is also fantastic, with great music, sound effects, and voice acting. I absolutely love the setting and actually produced a series a while back on the Mongol invasions of Japan if you're interested in checking out the period. For now, Ghost of Tsushima remains pretty secretive and a release date has yet to be announced, although it's likely the game will further be delayed and is probably going to be dropped later this year or even more likely in early 2020 as it faces competition from other titles. Lastly, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. This game has to be the most anticipated I'll be covering today. For those uninitiated, it's a medieval combat simulator with not only fantastic RPG elements, but also a greater sandbox setting layered over the top. In fact, the main game is very open-ended, with a greater focus on how your actions affect and transform the world around you. As a history nerd, I love the battles in this game as you can actually simulate ancient combat with hundreds of individually controlled players, which adds a level of realism and fluidity you can't get in any other video game or even in most movies. Check out this encounter in the desert as an example. If that doesn't blow you away, watch some gameplay of Sieges if you haven't already. They are more exciting than most Hollywood productions. Modding is also coming to the game, which apparently includes tools for not only small scale tweaks like reskins, but also large scale changes like maps. This is going to add so much to the game. All of this combined makes this title a must have. For now, you can get in on some of the early testing if you're lucky enough. However, this is a slow, slow project that's been moving towards completion for a while now, and the release date has yet to be determined. I hope you've appreciated my quick recap of the upcoming history games I'm interested in. Definitely let me know in the comments below what I've missed and what we should be adding to my list of upcoming history games. That's it, see you for now, and thanks for watching.